position. On BLG side, like we mentioned, a lot of focus onto early games into the bot side and BLG definitely know that that Zoe might be a problem. They're going to take it away. They're also going to put away iBoy's Kaisa and the Samira being taken off the table as well. In the meantime, we see Mark's Leona, always a always a targeted ban whenever you're going up against him. And then once more, Zika's Twisted Fate being taken off the table. A Lilia first pick for Rare Adam, while BLG take away the, the Bambi counter in the graves. Uh, how do you feel about this uh, this jungle trade so far? I actually don't think the, the graves is, you know, too much of a counter against the Lilia. Obviously, again, we know that Graves doesn't have the uh, MR on his true grit. Lilia does outpace him in terms of clear. And overall, the thing I really like about Lilia right now is just how diverse you can be with her build, whether going for something like the Moonstone or if you want to go more damage, you go with the Leandre's Anguish to where we haven't really seen Graves working out all too well in the LPL. And when you were talking about this, it feels a lot of the time without having that, that hard, maybe like double frontline, something like an Orn Leona, it's very hard for Graves to be able to do what he wants in a lot of these kind of 5v5 front-to-back setups. Yeah, we have seen the Graves just fall on the wayside. Very far under 500 right now in the win rate. For Rare Adam, they are going to take away the Renekton. Just a very strong blind pick in general. And they also have another pick to potentially fill out the mid lane. We have been seeing a lot of blind picks coming out from Fofo. He does like one of those strong champions, maybe the Syndra, maybe the Zoe, uh, as we have seen in the past here. But uh, still hovering around, keeping his options open right here. It is going to be the Zaya against the Jin. This is a pretty interesting matchup. Yeah, Zaya does not fare too well early on at all. We've actually primarily seen Zaya picked up only into the Kai'Sa matchup. You do struggle in a lot of other lanes. I think you can justify it when you're facing more of a like full dive composition, but BLG aren't drafting that at all. BLG have a lot of range they can play with, and I think iBoy's gonna have quite a hard time in this game. Yeah, definitely a lot of question marks onto that one. BLG going into the ban phase, they are gonna take away the Lover's Duo, making sure Rakan doesn't go onto Hong. And we have seen Han do very, very well on these engaged champions, so probably more support bans incoming going into that direction. But BLG still keeping their options open in the top lane. What do you want to see out of BLG run, uh, rounding out their front line? For, for BLG, I don't even necessarily feel like you need to index into a frontline top laner. If you do want to go with the pseudo kind of frontline, I think you go with something like a Gnar. Or the other thing I'd love to see is the, the Jace coming out as well, just for the fact that I think you just keep indexing into picking more range. RA right now don't have any hard engage. Uh, they don't really have a reliable way to get on top of you. Zaya is very susceptible to poke. Lilia as well. It, it's going to be quite an awkward time for RA in the mid game when you are fighting over mid wave for who can get on the objective first. If BLG just keep picking more long range. It definitely seems like that's the way they're going to be going for. And it's just really interesting to see how Aura are going to round out this draft. I, you and me both feel like they've shown, they're have they showing their cards a little bit too early here. BLG going to go with a flex pick. Uh, we have seen Mark actually play three games of Gragas already. He's been doing great things in the lane with it. It's probably our strongest laning Gragas that we've seen in the split so far. So definitely keeping their options open. Yeah, Gragas overall is just a pretty strong laning support in general. Obviously, you have very low cooldowns. You have the range coming out from your barrel, so... I do expect PLG to keep it bot lane, even though it is obviously a flex. We haven't seen Bu Bu pick it up at all. And now for RA, I think we need to see more hard engage tools coming in from their composition. So going straight for that Nautilus, not a champion we see all that much. And now in terms of mid laner, there aren't too many things that really go well up against that Syndra other than, you know, the Zoe, the Echo. Azir would be a good answer. You obviously don't win in the early uh, 1v1, but you can at least get Pryo and set up for the Lilia. But ooh... This might actually be a lot better, Clement. You have the AP jungler. You can have the mixed damage, and we've set up the 2v2 is what matters. Uh, but they don't go for it in the very end. It's going to go back into the stock and standard Orianna. I know you're disappointed right here, Lyric, but sorry. It's just going to be about balls in the middle lane. <laughs> what do you want to see out of BLG for their final pick? This looks like potentially a top laner or a support. I still think you just go with, with a ranged top laner. I, I think bringing out something along the lines of, again, you want to go Gnar, you do have a strong matchup, will be very action-packed from the top side. Your bot lane's very safe, but instead they want to pull out the Alistar themselves. The nice thing about the Alistar is that we set up, RA don't have that much hard engage, so even having the bit of disengage from Alistar feels like it can really stop RA's comp from being able to get onto the likes of both Sika and aiming. 
And overall, I would say I favor BLG's draft a lot more. It seems more cohesive. It's good into what RA have picked. And RA just have, I'd say, a jumbled mismatch of, okay, we can see they want to play around cube on the top side, but their mid and bot lane, a bit too scaling oriented. And again, I feel like they're really going to struggle up against the Singer and the Jin. I totally agree with you. I just don't see what Arya are trying to do with this draft. It seems like, uh, you know, they're picking whatever champions that they're individually really strong on, but doesn't really mesh into anything. And I think BLG right here, they, they do have that composition, which is a little bit more standard, I would say. They do have the range advantage, like you were talking about, and the disengage. Uh, just looking at the lanes um, as well, uh, which lanes do you think uh, are going to be focused on for the early game? And which lanes do you think have more priority coming into this matchup? I think we're definitely going to see topside be heavily focused. Again, the fact that that's really the only kind of heavy trading lane coming out from RA's side with that Renekton means that Lil Yen has to play more around that side of the map. I feel like BLG have options. BLG can really look to any of the three lanes to set up ganks, right? We have uh, Syndra Graves on, on their side, so... Very easy if they want to try and blow a flash or potentially a cleanse out from the side of Fofo. You have some good setup in the bot lane. We know Jin's very good in early skirmishing. I think you prefer to leave your Gragas on an island, but you always could look for a counter gank if, you know, uh, the enemy side does go a bit too far overextended. And also so a lot of pick... Oh, sorry, sorry, go on. I was going to say, Clement, so what we're saying is, it, again, it just it feels it feels a bit too easy for BLG with, their, with the amount of options they have in this early game. I totally agree with you. It felt like Fofo was just being shut down in the drafting phase right here. We could see him having a lot of hesitation and only locking the Orianna in in the last second. That wasn't the case with any other of the picks uh, coming out from Rare Adam. So just judging by that, I think they were struggling at the very end to kind of decide where they wanted to go with their composition. And they just went with something that feels safe but doesn't necessarily have an outstanding winning point against, uh, against BLG here. We are going to take a look at the level ones straight off the bat. Uh, today, there is no live audience due to, uh, you know, some complications with the pandemic going on in Shanghai. So there will be no Jios. That means more talking time for you and me, though. So we're just going to dive straight into this one. We are going to see some deep wards being placed down for Rare Adam. They are going to start out where Meteor starts. How do you think they can use this to their advantage? Uh, for RA, I actually ooh. don't... Ooh, we do get a replay, though. Yeah, there was a cheeky level 1 being thrown in right here. Flashes burned coming in for Mark. Do they get the level 1 kill? They actually do find a kill straight onto iBoy. You know, iBoy not really a stranger to death right there, but BLG having a very strong advantage coming out the gates. Still, both junglers gonna kind of go with the obvious route of we see Meteor pathing towards his bot side. We talked about how both his bottom and mid lane should be very strong. Uh, Lil Yen shouldn't be able to contest anything on the bot half of the map, so he himself is just gonna full clear towards top. And we should have, I'd say, a pretty slow kind of first four minutes of the game. Just taking a look at the rune choices right here. Pretty much everything is standard, but Lillian is going to go for the Dark Harvest. We have been seeing a lot more of the Lilias trend towards the Dark Harvest as compared to the Phase Rush. And, uh, you know, that that's something I find a little bit interesting. But Lyric, maybe you can walk us through the differences here in the rune choices. I think phase. Oh, though we actually have Lil Yen. Oh, going for that level three bottom clear gank, but uh, Zika is going to find the scatter of the weak and be able to walk away from this one. Yeah, so just trying to put a bit of early pressure down mid since Zika is a bit overextended, still not really in harm's way, Syndra. That's one of the benefits of we're just talking about phase rush on Lilia, but phase rush on your mid laners, right? You just have so much mobility to dodge a lot of these ganks. But going back to the Lilia point. I'm actually not too big of a fan of, of the Dark Harvest, especially when you're talking about this composition where we're saying, hey, uh, BLG can play from a range. They could probably kite out this Lilia despite the fact her having the movement speed already in her passive. Uh, just going to have more more burst damage and obviously a bit more scaling going in. So I feel like that's trending us towards going towards that Leandri's Anguish or a more damage-oriented route. But I don't see how Lil Yen gets onto any priority targets on the side of BLG. Yeah, we typically do think of Lilia as sort of a kiting champion. She's great against multi-melee compositions, but this is the complete opposite of what BLG has really drafted here. As you were mentioning, a lot of range champions, only Alistar are the ones susceptible to being kited away. Um, and just taking a look at the bot lane right here, Hong trying to hold on to that minion wave, making sure it doesn't go into the tower. He is going to complete that job. Does take a little bit of damage for it. 
but everything is still okay right here and we do see some very heavy trading in the early phases somewhat to ex be expected uh with this Syndra matchup and Fofo going very far below half health but we do see Lo Yen actually looking to make a play on mid again Oh, he's coming in, does have the pound stacks here. He does find the E onto Zika. Zika has no mana, is gonna give over a stack of the Dark Harvest to Le Yin, but he is gonna be able to walk away with his life intact. Still, it's gonna give Fofo a bit of breathing room to kind of clear this wave and start to look for a reset. Uh, we, we hit on earlier before the game that we expected this to be a very mid-jungle centric game, and we've at least been seeing a lot of that coming out from RA's side. Touching back on kind of win conditions and drafts, I feel like the silver lining for RA is the fact that, sure, BLG have this comp that can play from range, they have disengage, they have more pick tools, but we've seen BLG flop with this exact comp uh, composition many times before already. A BLG really isn't the team that likes to play disengage. However, a gank coming into the bottom side, Lillian going in, Mark looking like he's gonna have to sacrifice his life, does give over a Dark Harvest stack. Hong is the one to pick up the finishing kill. Not the greatest of kill distribution, but hey, you take whatever you can get in that situation. And Rare Adam are gonna equalize the kill score on the bottom side of the map. Yeah, we see Lo Yen giving up his Raptors just to look for that straight bot side gank. We saw the BLG uh, wave state was in a pretty unfavorable position, especially with uh, Meteor's pathing. He had just recalled to re-clear his top side camp. So again, not quite sure uh, why BLG couldn't get that wave under turret in an earlier rotation, but hey, at least BLG will be able to take an objective off of this. Nice consolation prize for them, and I just want to say, Hong, uh, Hang has been on fire in this couple last couple of series. Every time I've watched him, he's always landing the hooks, he's always in great coordination with his jungler. He definitely is uh, someone to watch in this matchup, and I think it's one of the stronger points that Rare Adam does have over BLG support in Mark. Yeah, Hong has been very active on the map. We saw glimpses of what this guy could be in 2020, but he obviously wasn't even the full starter. Kind of got brought in after uh, they decided Maestro just wasn't the right fit for the team. Was a bit disappointing because it was right after Maestro solo killed a jungler in Junja. It was really hilarious. I loved watching it, but point is, Hong has been the answer, and you don't really need to play with iBoy as Mark just uh, kind of saying hello. Yeah, trying to get some surprise factor going down there. They do have a level advantage, and they're going in onto Hong. Maybe this is going to be the caster's curse, but iBoy will find a great blade caller as he takes down Mark to below half HP. BLG did have the gank incoming, but unfortunately wasn't able to really sync up the crowd control here. And meanwhile, on the top side, we might be seeing, seeing some counteraction as Le Yen does find his chilling smite. He is going to tag Biu Biu with it. But uh, doesn't look like the dive is going to come through just yet. Yep, and we need to remember, Grog Grogus is a pretty difficult champion to dive just with all the crowd control and displacement you have. You body slam, you throw out the cast, you send them in two different directions. It's very hard to actually get that commit down. We also see this, this new Grogus build uh, being brought out once again, right? Where it is kind of Tear of the Goddess into full tank. So I'm going to pause because BLG might just go for the dive here. Meteor coming in with the red buff. He does tag iBoy with the end of the line as well. Forces out the flash, and it does look like some easy platings for BLG. They're going to take 160 gold back into the bank. However, Hong does show up here, and he is going to equalize the situation. So a strong win on the bottom side for BLG. But Lillian, they're going to try to equalize it here. He does have the ultimate. He's looking for the swirl seed. He does have the potential sleep coming in. Cube is walking up to the tower. But they do decide better of it. BB already walking pretty far back into his own lane. This is not going to be a kill and not going to be a turret plating either. So, you know, I would have to give this one to BLG so far in the early game. And had they been able to get that wave in quicker, that feels like your only potential opportunity to dive the Grogus. You, you know, land that Swirl Seed, put down the Sleep, and then hopefully your, your burst combo from both champions can pretty much just one-shot him before he can throw out any of that CC or Displacement. But we actually see BLG roaming their whole team to topside. Yeah, Meteor incoming with Zika. They do find a great explosive cast. Instantly forces the flash out of Cube. He goes back to safety. And this looks like a potential Herald play incoming. It is eight, the 8 minute 30 mark. The support has shown into the mid lane. And everyone is rotating towards that Herald. 
This is what you watch the LPL for. This is our bloodthirsty region. The fight is about to commence here. The wave is getting shoved in for the side of BLG. They're already going to start this one up. And it is Rare Adam's turn to answer right here. Can they actually find the positioning? Hong tries for it, but doesn't find the hook just yet. It looks like a disengage for the side of BLG. They do get the flash here, but they know that all the members on Rare Adam's side are already in position. So they're not going to chance this one just yet. A couple more waves being shoved in, but it doesn't look like either side is going to relent. I'm really surprised BLG didn't commit to that more heavily because iBoy actually wasn't level 6 at the start of that exchange. He got it from hovering around mid midwave and catching that experience. So they had level advantage. They have heavy item advantage for both Jin and Graves. And it looks like BLG still going to want to posture to take this fight. Hong is going to be the one that starts this one out, but Mark with a very good flash double knockup here. Even better coming out from Fofo as the shockwave lands onto two. A heal has to be used, and both sides trying to disengage out of the situation. A four-man sleep incoming from Luyan. Unfortunately for them, no follow-up. iBoy still trying to get the kill onto BUB. He does use the Feather Storm. He does find the kill and trap two members of BLG inside that Herald Pit. In the meantime, Mark does fall down. It is going to be another kill trade, but Zika very low health. Lion goes in with the flash. He does find the kill onto the opposing mid laner. iBoy trying to escape from the situation. So far, it has been six members going down. iBoy going to be the seventh. And finally, at the end of all of that action, BLG come out on top. They're going to be the ones that are finally taking away the Herald. That was a super messy fight. And I'm not sure what I make out of that one. That was all over the place. Honestly, it felt like BLG were the team that were too scattered. They should have won that heavily. We saw in the beginning of the fight, RA found a lot of uh, a clutch engages. We see Hung going in, uh, crowd controlling numerous people. Nice two-man shockwave coming out from Fofo. But they just don't have the damage as we saw from the four-man sleep. But point is, BLG are going to be able to pick up the Herald, get massive plates on topside, and deny a lot of gold and EXP as well. Definitely a great win on the side of BLG. We might be seeing even more action incoming. It never really stops here in the LPL, but it does seem like iBoy senses the trap coming from Mark. He is going to back off, and that's going to be first break gold going over to BLG. The thing, though, is this is what we expect from BLG, right? They're playing around a bot lane that can get early advantage. They do draft heavily for a strong 2v2 in the bottom side. Transfer that pressure on the map, pick up a lot of these objectives in the first 15 minutes. The question is, can they keep up the momentum to where the answer has typically been no? But again, with, with the draft difference this time, Clement, I have faith. I have faith in BLG. All right, Lyric showing up strong for uh, the BLG fans here. And I just want to note the kill distribution that went down in that early skirmish. We do have Zika coming up with three kills in that one. And we all know kills being focused onto a burst mage is extremely dead deadly. How do you think that's going to impact the rest of the game? I think it's going to be really tough for the members of RA, especially when we talk about, you know, your whole comp is extremely squishy. Nautilus, even, you know, a pseudo tank, very squishy support. Anytime he lands a scatter of the week, you could expect a member to just get chunked out outright or even just straight up solo killed from the ultimate. Yeah, and we see a lot of attention still being focused onto that mid lane. A scatter of the week was dealt out by Zika, but doesn't find its target. And it looks like both teams are slowly quieting down for the reset. In the aftermath of that great Herald fight, we do see the Infernal Drake going over to Rare Adam, so they are going to have that in their back pocket. And uh, it looks like everything is cooling down. The bottom laners are going back to their respective lanes. But how do you see this sort of panning out? Where is the next flashpoint on this map? I think oh, never mind. Zika actually going in straight away, using the ultimate just for the extra spheres onto the map, gets the scatter of the week and forces out the flash from Fofo. So talking about flashpoints, I, I guess we see it right away. <laughs> Yeah, and BLG just, just making the plays that are available to them is Biu Biu. Biu Biu still going in. He does find the target onto Fofo and a great snipe incoming from aiming. They do force away the mid laner from the tower, but Cube is looking and trying to equalize something here. It is going to be two platings going over to BLG, and they're going to be the ones that are taking the advantage and rotating with the priority, going for the bottom side here. We do see some more action coming in from Lillian but it doesn't look like they're going to be able to continue with this one. 
I expect to see BLG to continue continuously make a similar play to what we just saw. They've unlocked the map on top side. Their bot lane is going to continuously push. So it's very easy for both BUBU and Aiming and Mark to push in, rotate towards that mid lane, and you can even kind of entrap them from coming from behind with the Gragas. Gragas is an extremely good diver with the, the flash body slam into the casket. So for BLG, get the resets off. Look to go back to your respective lanes, and I think just try to set up a similar play again, keep control of the enemy jungle, and just kind of wait out for the next Drake or Herald to come up. The advantage is definitely still being in BLG's favors. You mentioned the tower dive that they can execute, especially when they have these pushing lanes on the map right here. So it definitely seems like Rare Adam are going to be on the defensive footing right here now. And just taking a look at their items currently, they are very far behind in the Mythic department, especially on iBoy's end. He's down in CS. He's very far down in the takedowns. And uh, looks like uh, they're going to have to swap around iBoy towards the middle lane just to make sure that he can pick up some extra farm where he is going to be less perturbed by the BLG members. And they're just so far behind right now. They're bleeding objectives all over the map. Yeah, they're trying to make a play in the mid lane since they do kind of anticipate that the enemy went towards spot side as Renekton did spot them out. Still, Zika very safe, has the phase dress, has the flash. But going back to your item discussion, I also want to highlight the fact that we got the Gale Force coming out from Graves rather than the Immortal Shield Bow. I think it was a very good buy against the sort of composition Ari has. It's not very like bruiser focused, not very all in. So keeping with the movement speed coming from the Mythic passive to keep kiting out the members of RA is going to be- Ooh, Biu Biu does go for a uh, body slam into it, but is the, uh, is the Shockwave able to get them out of that? However, Zika on the side, able to get the Scatter of the Week as well. So Fofo does go down. It's a two-for-one trade so far for BLG as they continue to push forward. Another Scatter of the Week is in the books right here. Can they actually find it? Lillian able to flash over the Spears and walk out of that one. But still a very strong win incoming for BLG as they mop up uh, two members on the top side. Oh. Again, iBoy still going in for the fight does have to have the flat uh, uh the ultimate force out of him flashes over uh, excuse me gale forces over the raptor wall right there to keep himself safe and blg finding another win in the mid lane yep unfortunately aiming not having the best prediction coming out with those those shots but still forces eye boy off the turret did deny it looked like at least a few cs and blg having complete control of the map thus far another thing that i find very interesting about this game is Again, Cube was supposed to be that pressure point for the side of RA, but with the fact that they are so behind, even something like the Gore Drinker, which obviously extremely strong on Renekton, it should keep you alive to get a second uh, set of spell rotations so you can sustain through a fight and kind of uh, just be that nice survivability tank. BLG are so far ahead, I don't even think he survives past that first uh, Gore Drinker active. He's just dead outright. Definitely agree with you. No amount of Call the Meeks is going to keep this Renekton from becoming a purse on the side of BLG. And uh, we just saw an uncontested Drake go over to Meteor. All the lanes are being pushed in on the side of Rear Atom. And it looks like another tower going down. So just not a lot of answers coming in from Rear Atom. They know that there's likely some members hiding on the top side here. So iBoy not willing to walk up to the tower either. And the full map is going over to BLG. It's something I love about their composition is the fact that they have Gragas plus Alistar, and both of these champions both work in tandem to not only be engagers or heavy divers onto the backline, but also have that versatility to be all kind of peelers and disengage. So BLG are just kind of showing the flexibility in their composition. They're threatening these dives. They're they're kiting out team fights. They're playing around their carries. It's all very clean, which is kind of surprising when you think that, hey, the gold advantage is only 2K, but it feels much bigger than that. We have talked about this pregame though. BLG's big test is always post 25 minutes. Despite their losing record, they've actually kept ahead of their opposition all this time up until the 25 minute mark. They always get the first two Drakes, but it's the third one that really trips them up. Do you see this being the case in this game? Do you think that BLG still have a chance to kind of fall into the same traps that, they, uh, that they've faced in their previous series? I don't think they should. We, we could say, sure, RA has a good scaling element on their side, right, with the Orianna and the Zaya. I do think they dropped the ball with going the full damage Lilia when you didn't need it, and you could have just made her the heal bot to enhance their scaling even more. But it does feel like BLG 
are so far ahead on the the key members that they should even be able to start something like a you know 25 minute baron force a turn onto the side of ra win out a team fight and kind of balloon their their gold advantage so i want to see more decisive and i'd say higher risk plays coming out from blg that shouldn't really be high risk if they can kind of operate correctly well brg uh our ra are making a poke uh, are, are making a push onto the mid lane as we see aiming preemptively using the curtain call trying to slow Hong down as Zika comes into the fight Mark has a very good engage from the backside but able to be flashed away aiming still finds the snipe onto Hong so that's not going to save them right there and they are pushing down mid lane with a herald in hand from Meteor making a very strong uh, play here in the mid side they also have the top lane wave pushing in, so a lot of options open for BLG. Yep, and this is also why we don't see a lot of Nautilus, right? Nautilus got an out of alert, nerfs toward, like throughout 2020 and towards the end of the season. He's not as tanky as the likes of Alistar Leona. He actually struggles a lot in those lane matchups, and it feels like he's a very hard time to get going, but we keep seeing this ping pong is aiming, gets caught out. Oh, and the stun comes in for Q. Finally, Lillian does find a kill onto the top side, and they're walking straight into a Baron play at 20 minute mark. We, we've seen this happen a lot of times, but it's a very ah, fast Baron. Clement, they didn't do it. I think they no. should have done it, Clement. You have the Lilia. You've talked a lot about the Leandries, uh, Lilia onto the Baron. You have the Zaya as well. It, it's felt like you were behind. I would love to see them go for this sort of play, but. Instead, they not don't go the for it, and Mark is going to be the one that forces some action right here. They do find a WQ combo onto Cube, but uh, this is just a more of a defensive play coming out from BLG. Rare Adam are going to be rewarded with that top lane tower. Wait a minute, Zika actually uses the teleport to do a cutoff here. Meteor does find a uh, flank onto the backside as well, so they do take down iBoy, get both of his summoners, and that play was turned around on its head as now BLG are going to do a fork in the mid lane and potentially have an open Baron play oh, too. Oh, Lu Yan. Lu Yan. He's actually being blinded, but is able to walk away with the Prance stacks as he does find some damage on a Meteor. He's going to be able to take down this Herald as well. However, Bibu is still looking for the play. They're looking for that veal meat coming in here. Is Bibu going to be able to find the explosive cask? Unfortunate aiming from uh, Amy. No pun intended, but he misses all three shots. And Lillian walks away with his life. Yeah, I think BLG could have been a bit more decisive there and just gone for that play. You have both Mark and Bubu there. Bubu had Flash as well. So I feel like that dive could have very easily been enacted. Maybe not feeling confident because Zika was catching top wave. And they technically don't know how far out of base the rest of the RA members are. We've highlighted Lo Yen isn't very durable. He does have the Zanya, so maybe he could have bought some time. But with the fact that BLG already have their double collectors coming out, it definitely feels like that was a play that could have been made. But we're going to go straight into the replay, Clement. And they are able to catch out iBoy. Very typical iBoy kind of being too far forward somewhere where he shouldn't. And they just, again, they have so much burst damage at this point in the game. He's just deleted. Yeah, great flanking war being placed down by BLG in the mid lane. And Cube is actually caught out here between three members. He is going to be tagged up by the captivating audience doesn't go over the wall from the explosive cast so he is able to walk away right here still holds on to his gore drinker as well not really anything able to do onto cube but in the meantime blg do break their third drake curse they're able to take that one down and rare adam are the ones scrambling across the map to find something of a consolation prize they do push into the top lane tower do get some minions but that looks like it's all they're gonna get and the thing is, right, we, the, the the Cloud Drake stacking in the soul is going to mean a lot for some of the members on BLG. Alistar really loves that. Syndra likes that quite a bit. But the problem is, when we talk about, hey, the way that RA does have these scaling threats, even if their team fight uh, kind of structure and formation doesn't interact well into BLG's comp, I still don't want this to go down to like a 50-50 team fight in the late game. We need to see BLG making, I'd say, more risky, more decisive plays force the Baron, you have great turn from both Alistar and Gragas, and start ballooning this gold lead. Looks like that's exactly what they're doing. They're going to be setting up on the Baron side right here. Already all five members onto this top side. They're clearing out all the vision. Rare Adam is being pushed so far back. It doesn't feel like there's anything they can do in this situation. And BLG are just going to be setting up 
for those potential dive plays as we do see aiming open up and the target being thrown onto Lillian, but he does have the Zanias to keep himself alive. It does look like actually Biu Biu being the one in trouble here. He falls down and it is 5e4 for Rare Adam as they are become the hunter in this one. They're going to chase away BLG and push down their mid lane tower. Clement, I don't understand. Zika was top lane, and you're you're forcing this play around mid, and then you're even separated from some of the rest of your members. You're focusing the person who has the Zanya's hourglass. I feel like a lot of the decision making and coordination in that play didn't make a lot of sense. The front line from BLG definitely felt like they went in a little bit too far, and just looking at Luyan, he didn't even have to burn a flash in that one, so he's still holding on to all of his survivability. However, BLG are going for round two. They're taking your advice. They're going for the risky plays. They're going to start a three-man Baron, and so far, it looks like Rare Item are a little bit slow on the play. They do use the teleport onto Cube to chase this one away, and BLG think better about their adventures. They're going to be hightailing it out of here leaving the Baron play alone, and Rare Adam are going to be the ones still coming into this river, clearing out all the vision. They're going to stabilize the map. The problem now is there was a point in this game, right, where you had item advantage on the side of BLG. You had double collector finished. Zaya didn't have that second item coming out yet. Zanya's wasn't done for Le Yen. You could have abused that timing and that spike to force a fight in, in your favor, but now with some of the passive gold you've given over to RA with, you know, the kills you've kind of inted over, the fact that they've just been able to start collecting waves in both mid, top, and bot, it feels like we're a lot more on even footing now in terms of itemization. I did lose you for just a while right there, Lyric, so uh, I am going to have to continue uh, uh, just assuming that this is going to be a solo cast from this point. Um, sorry for... Don't worry, Clement Chu. I'm here. Oh, you're back. You're back. That's great. We lost you for just two seconds right there. It did seem like you were talking about the setup for BLG. Um, can you give us a quick recap of your thoughts on this play? But never mind, Meteor actually does find Fofo into the oh. top side. He cannot dive away from the Shockwave, but it doesn't matter. He still finds a solo kill, and this is going to open up a lot of plays for BLG. Aiming, firing down onto Lillian. Lillian is caught out by the WQ combo over the wall. They're able to find two on BLG's side, and they are going in for more. BB does fall down, but it does force two flashes from the bottom lane of Rare Adam to go over the wall. Cube actually going in, finding one more back, and this is going to be a three-on-two situation. So the Baron play probably not on the cards just yet for BLG, but they do find themselves a very sizable gold advantage. And the best part is it's happening right before the Drake is about to come up, so potentially should be able to get those resets off and start getting vision set in the, in the bottom side and get that nice Cloud Soul. You know, nobody's actually that happy to have a cloud soul but hey you take whatever you get we do see the pings coming out from blg the members are all heading down right there and uh once again i, I think this is a lane allocation problem that we've been seeing from uh rare adam a lot of times uh, i think you did mention it during the sort of disconnect right there as well but it seems like every time rare adam sends someone into the top side they're getting caught out yeah, and it kind of goes with the way Rare Adam's comp functions, right? They need to get pressure as a five-man unit. They need their front line hung and cube walk. I'm sorry forward. to cut you off once again, but Bubu -Bu does find a three-man explosive cask onto the side of Rare Whoa. Adam. But a great shockwave incoming from Fofo. He's going to wipe that play away, and BLG are in a very awkward position. They're on the wrong side of the map with Hong chasing down Mark. He is able to use the scuttle for a getaway, and the fate of this... Dragon Soul hangs in the balance as both sides reposition the Scuttle being in a very awkward position in the tug of war, but Aiming is the one that is able to take that away. And Zika finds a perfect scatter of the week over the wall. He snipes out the jungler. It is going to be a 5v4, but Hong on the other side, uh, excuse me, Mark on the other side is found by the Crocodile. And this one is going right down to the wire. Meteor does secure the Dragon Soul, but the team fight is still ongoing. We're going to see Bubu go down right here. Maybe not. Meteor actually able to use his damage and disengage the rest of the members from Rare Adam aiming still trying to find some sniping plays but it is iBoy that's going to pick up the kill onto Biu Biu. Zika still going dodges out on the clean cuts. The fight is still ongoing because BLG are on the wrong side of the map. How is this one going to end up? There's so much tension. The double 80 carries on the side of Rare Adams though. It does seem like they have enough damage. They have enough 
HP at this point to kind of dissuade Rare Adam from chasing them on, but we are going to see a teleport incoming from Fofo. There's no love lost between this couple. He wants that kill onto Meteor. Unfortunately, he isn't going to find it. So as the dust settles and as all those crazy kills finally do settle down, we see BLG with the Cloud Soul and a huge trade of kills back and forth, but you know, not really that decisive of a play outside of the objective. First of all, Clement, I have no idea how Bu Bu survived so long and how aiming didn't go down at all. They were just sitting on like 5% HP in the pit. We are gonna get a replay. Zika, again, using these long range pick tools is able to burst out Le Yen immediately. Mark, in a bit of an unfortunate position, uh, Cube did wrap around those, so very smart play coming out from him. And then we're gonna see, okay, BLG in a bit of a dicey position. RA are a lot more healthy. They are able to all in, but it doesn't matter. Meteor picks up the Drake. And again, just keep your eyes aiming with the flash away. And Biu Biu, no one able to walk forward with Zika zoning out. I boy, sadly, he doesn't hit the scatter of the week. Biu Biu's still in a bit of an awkward position. Does just kind of walk into that blade caller, but still, I'd say some nice mechanical plays coming out from both sides. Good, really good pressure coming out from Zika to prevent I boy from walking forward. I guess my question for that play was the, you know, the setup for BLG. It seemed a little bit wonky for them to be ambushing on the enemy side of the jungle. Um, I will have to be very cautious about these talking points because uh, they're playing five, uh, ten man A ram right here, and the fight could start at any moment. Um, both sides are deciding to sort of back off and let cooler heads prevail as they reset the fight there. But uh, I, I just wanted to ask you, what do you think about that setup coming in from BLG? It was very unorthodox. Yeah, the, the, I'm less worried uh, as I uh, shut up as an engage happens. Never mind, Clement, we got baited. We got baited, Clement. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm so curious at why these two teams are going here, but Lane oh. actually uses the flash to try to find a sleep here. Hung is not waiting for a second chance. He's going straight in with the ultimate as well, but BLG don't look like they're taking a lot of damage. A lot focused onto Cube as they do take down the alligator right here, and our Rare Adam, despite the ones that are willing to go and start the fight, are the ones that have to back out too. A bit of a head scratcher right here. Uh, what are your thoughts on this engage? It seems like they're kind of giving over the Baron to BLG. Yeah, RA, and RA shouldn't be the team that, that should feel pressure. They shouldn't feel like they're on a timer, right? They're the team that is kind of scaling better as we see the longer the game go goes on, the more useless members like uh, Biu Biu and Aiming really feel in these fights. I can understand the engage coming from Hung. He thought he found the, the dredge line onto Biu Biu, but the flash from Le Yen felt a little bit too desperate for where the state of the game is at. Uh, yeah, that was just a bit of a head scratcher right here, but uh, BLG are not going to start the Baron off of that. They did have a 5v4 advantage, but they do think better of that. They're going to go back and reset most of the wave situations. And just talking about um, you you saying that, you know, Gragas is actually going to descale into the late game. What do you make of this build? We, we did hear you talk about the tier and the tank build coming in from the Gragas, but what is this build trying to accomplish? Yeah, we, we've seen players like Nuggery pick up this build where you pick up the, the tier for in lane where it, it gives you a lot of ability to continuously like spam out things like your barrels but you're still indexing into being that core frontliner when you do have enough burst damage coming out from the likes of the Graves and the Syndra. The thing I don't really like about it in this game thus far is he really doesn't have almost any magic resist, so members like Lo Yen and Fofo just absolutely blow him up. can share that sentiment as both sides go on to the Baron setup. Once again, BLG are the ones with the priority onto the top side in the mid lane, so they're able to sweep this area entirely clear, and it's gonna be a rare Adam that have to poke in into the river. Again, we see Hong doing his due diligence, sweeping out the wards on this side. Well, BLG are just waiting and setting up their waves once more. This is gonna be a very, very tense moment and potentially one of the rare instances that we're gonna see BLG finally come out with the team fight win. How do you think this fight should be set up? I definitely think we need to see just BLG playing from two angles rather than three like they did in that last one with Zika on one side of Dragon Mark on the like opposite side of their own jungle. Play off two angles again. 
use these long range pick tools to try to bait out flashes or like key abilities from the side of RA if you can't hit a scout of the week onto the likes of like cube and force him into like a dominus and just kind of buy time play time play with your range you don't need to be the team that really feels uh jumpy to get onto the enemy back line Mewbu doing a very good job setting up those flank wards like you were talking about. He's going to be the one that's going to be playing the double agent inside Rare Adam's jungle. And uh, BLG did pull off a little bit of a feint as we see the fight starting in here. This lilting lullaby going down, but Mewbu able to get out of that one with his own ultimate. And it does look like this situation is going to fizzle out. However, BLG do have a very strong position and an HP advantage over the Elder Dragon. So Cube does get the teleport straight back into the fight. He doesn't want to be late for this one. A huge objective going down here. And another base into teleport coming in from Bubu. Bew He's going to be holding down the choke on the side of BLG. Rare Adam are finding it super difficult to actually walk down this ramp. A lot of bad damage being thrown onto Hong. And aiming finds the snipe. It is going to be a 5e4 from here onward. Meteor doing a solo against Cube and actually winning out on it despite going up against Solo Laner. Cube has to burn his ultimate just to stay alive. And Mark going for the two-angled pincer like you were talking about. He's coming in. He's not spotted. He does find Lillian in the back here. But iBoy is going to dish out so much damage and force him back. The Elder Dragon is going oh. down. The flashing comes from Lillian, but he cannot find the steal. BLG are going to find the Elder Dragon. They're going to use that execute. And the members of Rare Adam scatter in the wind as BLG LG find a massive team fight win. It wasn't perfect, Clement. The, the the coordination wasn't exactly there, but they got the setup down. The two man setup. They were playing with the long range pick tools, and now they have the elder buff. They can pretty much force any fight they want. They're gonna also turn this into a baron. After this, we should see some nice resets, and then hopefully get into the final pushes coming out from BLG. That team fight went just exactly as you described it. BLG looking for the support flank, like you mentioned playing the pincer. There was a lot of tense moments as once again, uh, you know, BLG was able to hold off the flank coming in for rare Adam as they try to walk into the river themselves. So very, very tense, but BLG coming out huge here. At this point, it just looks like it's an unsurmountable lead coming in from BLG. What can rare Adam really do here? Do they still have any hope in this game? Yes, Clement. When you're facing yes. BLG in the late game, there is always hope because their win condition right now is, again, a lot of that, that miscoordination, that mistiming we've seen from BLG to just happen once again. One of their members run in a bit too far forward and they int into you. It shouldn't happen, but there is hope. BLG going for the full straight up five man push. They want to get the most value out of this Elder Dragon and Zika setting up for a potential scatter of the week. There are no buyers on the side of Rare Adam as they both back away from tower range. They're willing to let this high ground go. They're willing to let this inhibitor turret just drop. However, BLG are finding a little bit more difficult to advance past the choke. Finally, Rare Adam do give over ground. The inhibitor does go down, but BLG are looking for more as Mark does pop the, I believe the, Kerbal, uh, the Turbo Chem Tank right here and they force Rare Adam back a little bit more again. Elder Dragon still ticking. They do decide to disengage as we see Meteor once again heading towards the top side. It is a bit unfortunate, right? Because like you said, they want to get the most mileage out of their Elder Drake. So they just funnel all down mid. They ignore their side lanes, hoping that they can get a fight out of that as well and potentially end the game. But RA doesn't bite. They back off. They give up the, the structures. And now BLG having to run all the way back towards their base where their side waves are and start setting up for more Baron pushes. Only three seconds left on the Elder Dragon. No decisive team fight found for BLG. However, they still have a very strong position on the map. And once again, Meteor is unanswered on this top side. Just look at his farm. I don't think I've seen junglers have that much farm. 310 CS so far in this game. It looks like BLG, with or without the Elder Dragon, they're willing to give this a final last push. Mark is the one in the front line. Zika once again finding the Scatter of the Week. Doesn't find a back line, but does put some damage onto Cube. And Bu on the other side playing Interference. He might be the one that's actually engaged on right here. The Lilting Lullaby does come through. Bu is down to one third HP, is forced to use his ultimate, but he will escape and draw off two members from Rear Adam. That means this is a 4v3 on the top side. Mark does go in. Cube goes in as well. He does have the perfect timing to keep himself alive, but it does look like they will have to disengage from this one. 
BLG walk away with no members down. They do come and find what they were looking for. They get the inhibitor and a little bit more damage onto Cube as well as they force out the flash. Unable to take any more damage incoming from aiming. And I would say that was a pretty well played section from BLG. I think they could have played it a bit more patiently with their waves. It is quite hard when you have the wave clear coming out from Zaya and Orianna, but not really having the ability to all in the weak side while Biu Biu is getting caught up by two. And I actually don't think this hurts too much for the side of RA, right? You have uh, minions being funneled into your base, so Fofo and iBoy should be able to pick up more gold, but Hung, why are you here? Oh, Hung. Clement oh, Chu. The fight just happening in an instant, and having to burn another flash away from Nautilus. So, you know, things just going from bad to worse on the side of RA. And like I said, for RA, like sure, you lost structures, you lost inhibitors, but BLG couldn't get that fight before with the last Elder. So theoretically, you're at least getting two more minutes of waves funneled into you, more gold, more items. And then you go contest that next Elder because it seems like without Elder, without Baron potentially, BLG don't really have the way to force the end of this game. Seems like every time there's a fight that happens, Fofo does get a good shockwave, but the good things kind of end from there. They're not really able to push the members of BLG, and BLG are able to find the flank. So it does seem, once again, like you were mentioning, BLG are setting up for that Elder Dragon. This is going to be a four-man push. However, Rare Adam don't really know that. Um, they do see Meteor now in the mid lane, so this might be a chance for them to find an engage. They're still pretty afraid of BLG's gold advantage at this point. So they're going to back out. Looks like this is going to be a no contest on the side of Rare Adam. And BLG are going to continue the push. And again, just a bit more gold into BLG's pocket. At this point, turrets like this don't really add up to anything. You're not necessarily getting more pressure. The fact that you do have the top two inhibitors down means you at least could try to uh, sync up those waves and get that third inhibitor and set up for that Elder. But with Elder up in 30 seconds, I wouldn't be surprised if BLG just abandoned this and back off and start setting up for that objective. That's exactly what's going to happen. They're going to get one final reset in onto the map while Meteor is still hunting for some solo kills in this side of the jungle. For Rare Adam, they're finding it very difficult to actually walk out of their own base. Biu Biu is blocking them on the bottom lane. Meteor is blocking them on the mid lane. And we do see a pretty preemptive teleport coming out from Zika. Just coming in, searching for some picks. But Cube is the one that uses a slice and dice. He goes in, doesn't really find the Ruthless Predator just yet. So Biu Biu is able to dance away from that one. And uh, Rare Adam are finally poking their noses in what should be their own side of the jungle. It's very dangerous at this point. Nautilus is the one acting as a point man, and he's going to get wiped out right here as the explosive cast does come down. Amy is going to find the kill, make this a 5v4. Bibu goes across the wall. He's very safe in this position, and Zika doing a great job holding down the ramp. Meteor is going to find the second Elder Drake of this game. Cube is the only one in into the pit. He does have the Ceres Gauge, but it's not enough to keep himself alive. Rare Adam are down to three members, and BLG look like they're going to go for the final push onto this game, or they could potentially play it safe, but really at this point, I want to see some aggression out of them. I want to see them take this and make an authoritative finish. Yep, BLG, they, they had the setup perfectly, Clement. They find the picks, they find the objective. Now they should be able to take the game. Oh, another great find on the Zika. They're going to take down Luyin. The shotgun does win over Bombi, and this looks like it's going to be the finishing pushes as unfortunately for iBoy. He's the only member surviving on this one. He's doing his best to try to find some more comeback kills, and he does go in into the GA, is going to stay alive for just a while longer, but it's all just some finishing touches here from BLG. They're having fun. They're they're bullying people inside the fountain, and they're going to take down this game one. A great start of the series coming in for BLG as they make a late game statement that we haven't seen before. Two nice things for the side of BLG. One, they got the win. But the more important thing, Clement, Meteor solo killed Fofo in a side lane. It probably felt great for him, probably felt better than the win. And again, BLG just going to 